Good afternoon, everyone. Please have a seat. Council, you may call your first witnesses. Thank you, Madam Chief. I'd like to have Ms. Carol Clark and Mr. Charles Clark to return to the witness stand. Just indicate that Mr. Simmons from the Attorney General's Chambers is also present. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And at the conclusion of this exercise, and questions from yourself and commissioners, Madam Chair. There's another witness, Dr. Bradshaw, who we shall take. Uh, Very well, thank you, Council. I will not ask for the clerks to be re because the evidence is fairly fresh. And um, I'll just remind Mr. Clark and Ms. Clark that you're still sworn to tell the truth. Good afternoon, sir, madam. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. You recall on the last occasion, Mr. Clark, when we were here, we had gone for a water break of sorts in respect of the some questions that had been put. Yes, correct. And I'd just like to follow from where we left off. We had also uh, mentioned a number of documents that we will certainly go through shortly, but I just would like to focus your attention to where we had stopped, and then I will then allow you to continue as you had been doing earlier. Okay, understood. On the last occasion that we were here, you had shared with us not just your understanding but more so by way of diagrams the layout of the land you had on that occasion mentioned the fact that certain surveys were being conducted around you said either on the land and then words to the effect and I really should use the exact words, what I'm just trying to do a summary. Or in the adjoining yeah. area. Correct. You had stated, in fact, that the government of the day were still instrumental regarding surveys that were being done. Yes. And concerning the land. Yes, correct. I had, on the last occasion, served and through Madam Chair that some adverse notice should be given to the representative of the Attorney General's Chambers and that representative is here now. So what I'd like to understand, could you just explain to us exactly what you meant in terms of what's happening with the land now regarding surveys or any other matter that is? Well, just over the weekend pass, it was brought to my attention by another surveying company that Q-Ship was there surveying 
in that particular area. Now, he didn't say exactly what they were doing, but that was what he had passed on to me. You had made the assertion with some connection to the government. Well, it is government property. So no one surveys government property unless it's being conducted by the government. The point, however, that you are making then, as I have summarized it, what, what, what let me give you a chance. What exactly were you saying? Well, what I was saying was is that because it was brought to my attention that they were surveying in the area of the boundary of the property that was left to my grandmother, then there was, would be for me some cause for concern. Now, we call it before, um, over the years, remember, we've gone back on a numerous occasions in regard to the right-of-way, which has always led to nothing. And then there was one conversation that, that took place years ago where a it was a layer that a permanent secretary who uh, my brother-in-law and sister had approached in regard to this situation pretended as if nothing was happening. So in other words, it's like if the government decides to come back and take some more, it should be okay. But you say that in just your Well, sarcastic. I mean, yes. I mean, technically, yes. But that's the view that you would take, or I would take anyway. I will move on for now, and then I'll come back to it. Can you just pick up first where you had left off? Oh, uh, well, I think that was the end of um, the conversation that we were having. Then you moved on to my sister. That ended yes. there. Yes. Okay. Well, let me let me just do that. Okay. Thank you very much. Excuse me, counsel. Uh, I think your microphone may be off, but through the chair. For the avoidance of doubt, uh, my surveying company is QShip limited to which Mr. Clark referred to. So I don't know if you want me to address that now or at some later time. Okay. What, what I'd ask is that through the chair, probably yourself and the commissioners could probably, yourself and the commissioners could probably just take a moment to discuss amongst yourselves because this this revelation is, is, is I have been taken unaware, too, in terms of what has been said. Okay. Very well. Or we'll just probably we'll a, just a take, five take or a short ten minutes. Break. Yes. We'll take a short break. And, so. and we'll convene and we'll...
Thank you. Madam Chair, in, in respect of my request, in respect of the yourself and commissioners um, having a recess, I don't know if you'd like to address the matter that just came up in respect of what Ms. Commissioner Stovall had started to say. Yes, certainly we may as well address it so that it can be fresh on the record. Thanks. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, in the interest of transparency, um, notwithstanding that we may have been seen in the neighborhood um, of the subject property, we actually have never surveyed uh, anything in the proximity of Francis Patton or your family property. Um, to put a finer point on it, we haven't done anything from Gospel Hole, uh, between Gospel Hole and Limehouse Lane. So we may have been seen in proximity in relation to work we were doing on the opposite side of the road, um, but we haven't done anything in that in that immediate area at all. Okay, that's that's fair yeah. enough. Uh, we have high visibility um, vehicles. So yes, it's, that's it's true. Entirely possible. So thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you. And I believe Mr. Clark said that he was told. It's not that he... Yes. Yeah. It's not that I saw. It. I was, yes. it was brought to my attention. Yeah. It's more island than Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, very well. You may proceed, Council. Thank, thank you both. Thank you very much. I'd like to continue, uh, Ms. Carl Clark. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Mrs. Miss Clark, I'm sorry. On the last occasion that we were here, a number of exhibits you had made reference to them, documents you had made reference to, and they were made exhibits. And I'm going to take you through those documents because we had only, by reference, mentioned them, but we had not gone through them. So I'm going to take you through that exercise. Very well, madam. Very well.
I'm going to start, Ms. Clark, at the what we have as Exhibit 8 through, through to 11. The first one is a document dated the 5th of May, 1956. It's Exhibit 7A, but you had had, well, it had been labeled for you 8 through to 11, but for our records here is Exhibit 7A, C-A-E-C, -E 7A. Can I have side of the document, please? Sure. Certainly. Is, is it a document regarding public works receiving on May 5th, 1956? It is, yes. So our, our records have it as May 8th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right there, do we give it? That was it right It has been displayed. Yeah. It has yeah. been displayed. Presently mm -hmm. on the, it's been projected on the right. screen. Right. You have found yeah, it? Yeah, we have it. Yes. No, I have it. That document, could, could you read it for me, please? Bayless Bay, Flats, Hamilton Parish, 5th of May, 1956. Director of Public Works, Hamilton. Dear sir, may I please be granted a right of way or easement over the land recently sold by me to government for a playing field in order that I might reach my land on the waterfront. Mrs. Agatha Burgess and was received by Public Works, Miss May 5th, 1956 file A27 slash A. And can you just remind us, um, you were here a few days ago, but just by way of recap, remind us who Agatha Burgess is? Agatha Burgess was my late grandmother on my mother's side. Okay. Now, to your understanding, what does this document relate to? It relates to a compulsory purchase that government did in, on the 5th of May, 1956. And a request for an easement as well. And specifically in relation to the easement, are you able to assist us in that regard? Uh, Why an easement was being preyed upon? Because she still had to reach land at the waterfront where a government dock is close to situate. And was she able to reach the land after the expropriation? After the right after of way was compost. granted? Yes. Yes, she was supposed to, but uh, it's been blocked off for a number of years. Okay. I was going to ask you to place the microphone a little closer to you. Mm -hmm. She was supposed to be able to allow by the granting of the right of way that she should reach her property, but that's been blocked off. That permission has been blocked off for a number of years. Now, when you say blocked off, what exactly do you mean? Well, she hasn't been able to reach it. It's all blocked in, fences and walls and everything else. Okay. Now, what type of fence was placed there, can you say? I believe it was a wire fence and walls and you just can't reach it uh, in the in the granting of the right of way. You can't reach it because it's no longer no right of way. So your understanding is that sometime after the compulsory acquisition, there was Miss Miss Burgess could not could no longer could freely no, access. True. Uh, I have here a plan 
of what the situation is. It's as my exhibit number 17, which is what should have been done. I crave and done. Jacked. Sure, go ahead. That was it seems to be that the right of way had never been granted because of the fact we can't get to the water's edge. So I'd like some clarification on whether it was granted or whether it was not granted. Thank you. No, madam, the plan. Mm -hmm. uh, can I you make, may go ahead. Can I make one more, one more assertion? Uh, in the letter dated the 13th of March, 2020, from Mr. Cyril Vitta, my brother-in-law, he states as his last paragraph, my wife and I engaged the Ministry of Public Works in April 2017, without going too, success. Going too, going too fast. Read that slow for me. My wife and I engaged the Ministry of Public Works in April 2017 without success. There is still no right of way. The government wall and fence are still blocking our access. And that we are in possession of documents supporting the above. Can you advise the next steps? And that document you refer to is? The letter, the three letters that I put in on the 24th, as well as the last one which says, it was now endorsed on a conveyance dated the 5th of May, 1956. Thank and you. a copy of plan. Thank you. And at the top of that document, it says exhibit eight through to 11. Correct. Okay. The witness is referring to exhibits CAEC4. Is that for my purposes, Council? And the Commissioners, Madam, just okay. to appreciate what the reference is being made to. Okay. You're not asking me to put it in the exhibit? No, I'm not, exhibit. madam. Okay. Ms. Clark, you may continue. Uh, in, in relevance to what this time? I'm coming to you, sorry. I'm just being aided with the exhibit numbers. Thank you. Craven. No. 
in respect of the said right of way, to your knowledge, can you say whether or not any decision was made or any right of way was ever granted? That would, would have been the last exhibit in the... Um But let me just okay. go. Uh, number nine. From the acting director of public works to the honorable attorney general, Ria Gatha Burgess. With reference to my conversation with Captain Corey on the 15th of May, I enclose a plan number 146A4 and letter from the above dated 5th of May, 1956. The position is that when the railway company required land from Mrs. Burgess, it left a small area between the railway bed and the sea in her inner ship. This small area was not purchased with the bulk of the property for the Francis Patton playing field, and she now asks for an easement to reach it. As she earned the property at the time of purchase of land by the rail railway company, would you please confirm that she has in fact established her right to cross both the land recently purchased from her and the railway bed to reach our waterfront properly. And four, presumably this right has only been established on foot. 15th of May, 1956, signed by the Acting Director of Public Works. Thank you. Might I just take you to document dated March 13, 2020? That shows I don't have that. Yes, go ahead. In respect of that document, have you seen that before? I have seen it. It was sent back to me by the chairman of the commission uh, when um, she was asking me to withdraw my case. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not following. When we received a letter um, that was from the commission, it was asking, um, in the event that the facts you rely on are different than the facts set out in March 13th's letter from Mr. Vitter, a copy of which is attached for ease of reference or his reply to this letter, please set out in detail the different position you are taking and your reason for taking a different position. And okay. I wrote back on the 27th well, of May. What you said, withdraw. She was, you, you said you're being asked to withdraw or to clarify. Clarify, sorry. Okay, yes, withdraw is a very strong final word. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yes, please. Yes, to, just let us go back over that for j just to ensure. Prior to this March 13, 2020 letter, you had written to the commission setting out your claim. Correct. Okay, let's, go to, let's start with that document and let's get to this. So, so we clear the air. That was this one. Let us start there. I believe these are my references. Uh, 18, my exhibit 18, we're going to. Okay. So let us, let us start there at that document, please.
Okay, do you want me to read this letter? What's the date of the letter, madam? 11th of March, 2020. And my brother had put it in as his statement. Yes, please. Let's start there. March 11, 2020. Miss Carol Clark, 100 North Shore Road, HM 14, Bermuda. Mr. Charles A. R. Clark, 107 North Shore Road, HM 14, Bermuda. To whom it may concern, Agatha Burgess was a well-known educator who taught for many years at Francis Patton School. She was active in the AME Church as a missionary society organizer of Women's Day activities and district Sunday school superintendent. As a political activist, she served as secretary of the Hamilton Parish Political Association and was instrumental in helping Hilton Hill, Walter Robinson, and Gilbert Darrell win seats in the House of Assembly during an era when odds were against blacks serving to serve, seeking to serve in Parliament. Could I just interject and say that my grandmother was a member of the Norfield Taylor Missionary Society at Bethel Amy Church. Thank you. Please proceed. Music education and the Amy Church have figured prominently in the lives of the Richardson family for more than 150 years. Their forebears have been a presence in Hamilton Parish to emancipation and they were able to acquire property at a mere 17 years after slavers' abolition. Agatha's mother, Eva Susan Isabella Richardson, can be a property to her in the early 1900s, which Eva was the daughter of Daniel Bascom and his wife Charlotte Mallory Bascom. The whole property was purchased from Elixine Sion in 1851, over two or more acres. Agatha's mother vested her interest, which was compulsively purchased mostly, leaving her house with leaving her with her house. They gave a little property on the side and monetary interest not in keeping with the proper cost of value. She earned from the street, North Shore Road to the Atlantic Ocean in brackets, down where the property where Francis Patton in bra open brackets lower is situated right to the water encompassing the playing field, close brackets, and where government dock is situation. There's a plan by Public Works which bears this out. Please review and see, send the correct monetary instruments in this regard. Sincerely, Carol A. E. Clark and Charles Arthur Clark, Charles E. R. Clark. Thank you very much. That's already an exhibit, Madam Chair. Now, having sent that letter, did you receive a reply, ma'am? Yes, I did. What's the date of the reply? I have it. The reply came on May 4th, 2020, but I don't think I received it until later that month. Okay. Could you just read it for me, please? Miss Carol Clark, 100 North Charade, Pembroke, HM 14. Mr. Charles A. R. Clark, 107 North Charade, Pembroke. Mr. Cyril Bitter, Jr., 6. Can you just shift the microphone as it's closer to your mouth? 6. Napton Hill, Smith Parish, F. L. O. H. Dear Miss Clark, Mr. Clark, and Mr. Bitter, the Commission has received your applications dated the 11th of March, 2020 and the 13th of March, 2020, and has reviewed the information and documents you have filed with the Commissionary Secretariat. As you are aware, at this preliminary stage, the Commission must determine whether it has jurisdiction to hear your case. The Commission is not a court of law, and it cannot issue any orders that will address individual land losses or attempt to provide an individual remedy for such loss. Rather, it must determine whether your case is but one example of some systematic land grab and or whether it shall make a report to the director of public prosecutions for further action. As a general pro proportion, I may say that the commission cannot make its decision based on all broad allegations without supporting evidence. Unt uh, ultimately, its conclusions must be supported by the evidence as well as it 
would be helpful if the nature of your complaint were to be articulated with some precision and if you would explain how it relates to your alleged loss. Upon review of your application, the Commission can come to conclusion that before it accepts your case, it needs the additional information or evidence from you as set out below. It may add that because of the current pandemic, the commission, commission has extended the time to file any additional materials until 30th of May 2020 or such time when the government has terminated and, sorry, terminated the current shelter-in-place regime, which is the late latter. I will set out below the additional information required from Ms. Clark and Mr. Clark in the event that you rely on Sorry, in the event that the facts you rely on are different from the facts set out in the, in the 13th of May, 13th of March 2020 letter from Mr. Ritter, a copy of which is attached for ease of reference or his reply to this letter, please set out in detail the different position and your reason for taking a different, different position. Thank you. Having received that letter, can you say what next you did? Yes, I did. I wrote on the 27th of March, as I received it on 27th of May. On the 27th of May, I received the letter on the 26th of, of May. So I didn't have much time to get the um, information together. But I do know that I have a letter dated the 27th of May, um, somewhere here. You just take your time, take your time. Okay, on the 27th of May, I wrote this particular letter in handwriting. Ms. Clark, Ms. Carol Clark, 100 North Shore Road, Pembroke, HM14, Bermuda. Mr. Charles A.R. Clark, 107 North Shore Road, Pembroke, HM14. To whom it may concern further to our letter of the March 11, 2020, Ellickson Sion and Isabella Sion, slave earners, allow their former concubines to purchase land at a premium from their estate. For Daniel Bascom and his wife, Charlotte Amanda Bascom, Charlotte, daughter of the first black minister in Bermuda, they married at Holy Trinity Church, P Hamilton Parish, on Believe or Not, May 21st, 1837, 193 years ago in brackets, last week. Daniel passed at the age of 48, and Charlotte passed 1889 at the age of 72. P.S. Daniel Bascom could not write his signature on the deed is an ax. On to mention couple, Daniel and Charlotte and Eva Susan Bascom Richardson was the 16th child. Were the surviving heirs to this girl mine at the death of Charlotte Amanda in 1889. Reverend Austin Richardson, a stalwart Christian man of much power through prayer and a church builder, St. Luke's, St. John's, Richard Allen, Bethel, and putting on the vestry at Allen Temple are to his credit. He is the only pastor in the history to have pastored Bethel Amy Church twice, took Eva Susan, Miller, Eva Susan Isabella as his wife, and the two of them brought out Daniel Bascom, Jr., as stated before Eva's elder brother, equity in the land sometime after his death and Charlotte Amanda. Eva property on the hill was left at a wheel to her children. Tresselia Warner, one-fifth, Agatha Burgess, one-fifth, Whitfield Richardson, one-fifth, Vivian, deceased, died when young, and her share went to Whitfield Richardson, Cecil Casey, one-fifth, and husband Ernest Casey. The next thing I then put in was the letter of March 11, 2020. Okay, just a minute. So in respect of that letter you wrote in your own handwriting, yeah. excuse me, I'm just going to ask Madam Chair that that could be admitted as an exhibit as CAEC 6. And this is the letter dated 27th of May, 27th of May, 2020. 27th May? 
2020, yes. 2020? Mm-hmm. Right. And this is the one in your own handwriting. Eh? Yes, it is. I haven't finished the actual caption yet. Please continue. Thank you. To Thank the you. Chairman, Commissioner of Inquiry into History, Losses of Land in Bermuda, in brackets, our legacy and island home. Charles and I stand firm on the prayers of our four parents. We take the view that right is right and wrong is no man's right. We, are, we have been provided with a copy of Mr. Witter's letter, quote, however, we are not reliant on his testamentary given, at, end quote. We are reliant on the history of our rich heroines and heroes, family mentors. Please find a touch a copy of Honoring Bermuda Emancipation, Trail of Our People's Community Heroes, Southampton and Hamilton Parish, Sunday, July 27, 2004, 14, City Hall, 7 p.m. We beseech the committee to dig deep into their innermost being to reach a possible end and positiveness to this long, drawn-out saga in our family. Our grandmother was not treated appropriately, and she did not get a package that was commensurate with her worth. Her favorite saying was, cash your cares, cash your bread upon the waters, it will return after many a day. Please let that day be soon. We are standing in good, better, best. Never let it rest until your good is better and your better is best. We trust that favor has finally come. Yours sincerely, Carol A. E. Clark and Charles Clark. Thank you, ma'am. <clears throat> Can you tell us what next you did, ma'am? I had all the attachments. I sent it in, and then I, I was just called. I was going to ask you just to slow down a bit, <laughs> please. Just take your time. Do you, can I offer you some water? Yeah, okay. that's okay. okay. So, having made that note, there are a number of documents that you pray and support. I just ask you to take us through them. You know them better than I. Okay, honoring... Just one, one by one, we'll go through them. This was uh, seven, honoring Bermuda's emancipation. Back to the microphone, please. Close honoring side. Bermuda's emancipation is a dossier tra trail of our people's community heroes, Southampton and Hamilton Parish, set on Sunday, July 27, 2014, City Hall, 7 p.m. And it, it's just, I just included uh, the Richardson family page, which has a picture of Reverend Austin Richardson and Eva Susan Isabella Richardson uh, on that. Do you need to have copies of this? Just remind us who those persons are. My great-grandfather yes. and my great-grandmother. Okay. So that document you have, how many pages is it? Oh. Just take your time. We're in no rush. Take your time. four pages that I have included in this uh, particular part. Thank you. I just crave your indulgence. The document, Madam Chair, which is four pages, it is titled Honoring Bermuda's Emancipation. The witness draws our attention to it because it makes reference to her great-grandfather and grandmother. I'd ask that it be tendered and admitted as exhibit CAEC 7. Document marked honoring Bermuda's emancipation heroes, uh, and I believe at the bottom is dated Sunday, July 27th. That's correct. It's entered as Exhibit CAC 7. Could you read the relevant portions that you wish to us to rely on? You want me to read the whole thing? Please, thank you. 
Or are there any parts that you'd like to draw to our attention? The Commission can read it, but are there any parts that you think that you'd like to really draw to our attention? Okay, I can read. The Richardson Family Music Education in the Union Church, first, which so. is um, basically what I wrote in my dossier, my, my letter. Furbiers have, I, I wrote this in my um, letter. This. Of my statues. Yeah, I, I, my apologies, ma'am. I was just telling the administrative matter. Please, please go ahead. Okay. Um, in order to short circuit me reading this, if you read the front of it, it says Governor of Bermuda, Ministry of Community and Culture. Just slow first, not so fast, please. Ministry of Community, Culture, and Sports, Department of Community and Cultural Affairs, honoring Bermuda's emancipation. Yes. This should be a government record. Yes, thank you. Thank you. We will I take your guidance. What, what, what we'll do, the other documents that you had, could you just take us through them? The next one was a plan of land uh, tendered to show that my mom had 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 in prop, part of the property, and her name is Dr. Faith Burgess Clark. You'll see her name at the end of this plan. That was sent in as uh, subdivision 3289 uh, on December 20th, 1989. Thank you. Just one moment. So council, are these gonna form part of Exhibit CAC seven, or you're, they're going to have their own number. I'm seeking to confirm. No, I, I just went to have sight of it just to confirm okay. before I make an application, Madam Chair. document which is has that is headed Ted Gauntlet Chartered Surveyor Ted Gauntlet Chartered Surveyor the witness has indicated the purpose for which she relies on it I'd ask that that document is tendered and admitted as exhibit CAEC 8 So that's the document Gauntlet Surveyor uh, entered as Exhibit CAEC 8. 
Council, I have a little concern regarding the next witness, which is to follow. Um, are we going to be able to finish these two witnesses in time so we can hear from the next witness? It, it does not appear that we will, and that's why I had asked the secretary to speak to Dr. Bradshaw just to apologize because based on the time we have left for here and today, we may not get to him. We certainly, um, I think that the, the, the amount of witnesses we have today ha have been uh, such that we have not been able to get to all of them. Okay. So we may need to invite him. So if that is the case, perhaps commissioners should note it and then um, give him an adjourned date. Is there an adjourned date we could give him if he's available on that day? Uh, Dr. Bradshaw, we do apologize. Um, it looks as if uh, based on the number of matters that we've had before your matter, your matter is not going to be reached this afternoon. And so we're trying to ascertain when we could ask you to come back and perhaps first thing in the morning so we don't run into the same difficulty. Do we have any date that we first thing in the morning? Well, I, I believe that he could be advised by Monday to today's tomorrow. Well, mon oh, but you mean call him on Monday or, or because Monday morning, remember that we have that other matter that's scheduled, the brown matter? I, I believe Tuesday may be a better date for him if that's convenient to the witness. But I'd just like to apologize once again to him. Mm -hmm. We had hoped that we would have gotten to him today. Tuesday. We, if Tuesday we have um, the other matter, the Harris matter scheduled for that time um, and at 10 o'clock. Tuesday at nine, afternoon. At 9.30. Tuesday afternoon may be best. Yes, Tuesday afternoon would be good. Would you be able to come Tuesday afternoon, uh, Dr. Bradshaw? Sorry? With all respect, I'm just considering that just because she is the officer, I do have another engagement. I see. And I'm just wondering how I might use that and how to might even be the other part of the meeting. So um lengthy afternoon will be preferable to the public. Do we have something scheduled for Yes. Yeah, Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. Is fairly tired. I'm advised that we have matters scheduled every day for next week, but what we should be able to do, we'll make the adjustment and advise him by telephone later this afternoon. We had, in preparation for next week from yesterday, the list for the following week had been already been prepared, but we'll make the adjustment in light of the inconvenience that has been posted to him today. Can we do that, Dr. Bradshaw? Will that be totally inconvenient to you if we call you this afternoon and agree a mutually convenient time? Uh, it would be unsuccessful. I don't have a and okay. I don't be learning this afternoon. All right. Afternoon. But perhaps an email, definitely. Right. We do apologize for the inconvenience, but um, we thought your matter would be reached, but it certainly doesn't seem so. So um, the Secretariat will give you a call this afternoon and agree a mutually convenient time. And of course, if you're finding this interesting, you sh should sit and listen. Okay. You, yes, you may, you may sit in as long as you want. Thank you very much. Yes, Ms. Clark, please continue. Um, we will, uh, the next thing I had um, sent back was the letter of the 4th of May, 2020, which we have already gone through. Yes. And I believe that was the final thing in the list, other than some notes that I had made in handwriting. Would you like to hear them? 
Yes, please, go ahead. Agatha Burgess was a well-known educator who taught for many years at Francis Pett, and she was actively uh, in... Too, too fast, too fast. See, I, didn't, I knew that you didn't want to hear that. No, no, I want to hear, but you're just going too fast. That's, that's how I read. I'm sorry. <laughs> Agatha Burgess was a well-known educator who taught for many years at Francis Patton. She was active in the Amy Church as a member of the Missionary Society and organized. It's already been in. It's already been in. I already stated this letter. It's okay. a part of uh, the actual dossier that I wrote. Okay. Now, you had place reliance Caribbean object. map you just mentioned earlier. Gauntlet one? Pardon me? The Ted Gauntlet map? No, the very large one you had, which is not yet oh. an exhibit. 17, here it is. So, can you just remind us what that document represents? It represents the status speak, of the. Speak, speak into the microphone. Represents the status of the property as it stands now. Okay. It was dated uh, April 1992, was done by. Um, Mr. Matthew, Stephen Guy Matthew, Sorry. of Bermuda Caribbean. Okay, just remind me of the date. April 1992. Okay. I went to ask that, that document be. Uh, you had commissioned that to be done, madam? Yes, I myself did that. Okay. With a, with a lawyer by the name of Phil Parent Chief. Okay. And the purpose of. Mm -hmm doing that was to ascertain? We wanted to ascertain how things really were. Okay. That's that document. Just Could you just read the title for us? That, that to be tenor admitted as exhibit C-A-E-C-9. Could you just read the title for me, please? That is plan of, Speaking to the microphone. plan of land in Hamilton Parish, scale 1 to 250. Uh, Stephen Guy Matthew, April 19, 19, April 1992, Bermuda Caribbean Engineering Consultants Limited, Surveyors, Planning Consultants, and Valuers, Hamilton, Bermuda. Thank you. Just going to. Council for Accuracy, I just want to make sure that I have this correct. Um, I've entered it as CAC 9, but I have the notation as it represents the status of the property as it stands now, and it's prepared by Bermuda Caribbean Engineers, um, and that's April 1990? 1990? 1992. 1992. And it's from scale to 1 to 250? 1 to 50. To 50. 1 to 250. 250. I, I assure Ms. Clark, who I realize is looking carefully at us mm -hmm. when we have custody of her document, we just wish to 
make a copy and we will return it to her. Um, she, she's one who guards carefully her documents and, and, and has kept them. That's why each time, Madam, we keep going back and forth with them. So are you going to make a copy, to, copy here in the precincts? So We're going to try to do so. and Well, we'll do so. But I, I'm sure Miss Clark will watch us carefully as we do. She probably so. will want to walk with you. She probably will. <laughs> Wait a minute, I might have a copy for you, so you wouldn't have to worry Thank about you. that. She has carefully I, I guided her, her documents. And I have the original right here. Yeah, so, so we may have this copy. You can keep that copy. Thank now. you very much. Okay. Yes, please. I just crave indulgence so it can be shown to counsel Mr. Simmons while... if you want to speak to someone, maybe they can walk over there. Just ask you to look at those two documents, the exhibit, which is CAEC 9, the plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's just a little couple of um, what, what do you have there? I have the plan and a little, small little, um, I would say, sketch of the actual property as it stands today. So one is a plan and one is a sketch. Yes, correct. And the sketch was provided by you to us? Correct. Okay. The document which is a sketch of the area, Madam Chair, asks that the tenant admitted as exhibit CAEC. Will it be 10? Or 9A. 9A, please. Because the 9 that I have is, remember that it rep represents the status of the property as it stands now by Bermuda Caribbean engineer. And if we're putting in the sketch as well, should we identify it as A? 9A, okay. thank you, madam. Thank 
document is being shown to you. Slap. What do you have there? What is that? Uh, my exhibit number 14. Uh, yes, this is correct. Okay, you're speaking to the microphone. What? Exhibit number 14. My exhibit number 14, which says land for new what, what is it? What is, before you read it, what is it? Exhibit number 14. No, what, what, is it, what is the document itself? Oh, it's a newspaper clipping. Okay. Newspaper clipping. And what's the date of it? Um... June 30th, 1956. June 30th, 1956. Yes, correct. And you'd like to place reliance on that document? Yes, I would. Okay. I'd ask that the document dated June 30th, 1956. That it be tendered and admitted as exhibit CAEC. It's a Royal Gazette article? Yes, correct. And it's headed Land for New Road to Costly Assemblymen. Is that the part you're drawing attention to? Yes, correct. Just ask you to ten, eh? Exhibit ten. Thank you, madam. Could you read the document? Um, let me just find it. Mm. There were objections in proposed payment of that's no, not that one. one. This is page fourteen. I have to can I see that? Yeah, I have it. Work on new road already begun. Land deal approved. The long projected road from foot of the lane to the South Shore pageant will be complete. At the earliest possible moment, the Honorable H. D. Butterfield, Chairman of the Board of Works, assured the House of Assembly yesterday. The House passed a resolve to buy land for the roadside at a price of £4,646. £4, During consideration of the Governor's message giving the price, Mr. Butterfield recollected that the Board of Works had negotiated to buy the land at a price of 4,000 pounds an acre. The method used was that always previously followed the Board of Works in acquired land, in acquiring land. The method used, as I reiterate, was that always previously followed by the Board of Works in acquiring land. A committee of the department had considered what, in their opinion, was a fair price for the property. The price, subject to legislative agreement, had been to put to the owners who had agreed to it. When the matter reached the House, certain things were said, which in my opinion were unfortunate. Mr. Butterfield said he had stated at the time he thought they were unfortunate, and he said so again that the remarks were most unfortunate. It was also suggested that the Board of Works might go back and see if they could get the property at a lesser price. It was also suggested the matter be sent to arbitration. One of the estates was in an involved situation, and as Mr. Butterfield understood, negotiations had to be made with the trustees of the estate. It seemed to me that the most satisfactory way to deal with it from the point of view of the government and from the point of view of the owners was that it was sent to arbitration, Mr. Butterfield said. The arbitration had gone into carefully 
and had come to the conclusion that a fair price was the amount suggested by the Department of Works. Mr. Butterfield then said that a slight discrepancy between the previous course announced the House and the present course was the result of resurvey which showed that little more land that a little more land was needed from one property and a little less from the other. The previous amount requested was four thousand six hundred and seventy two, making the cost twenty six lower twenty six pounds lower. I personally am pleased with the outcome of this thing, he said. I think the rail will be an excellent one. He also thought that an interchange of property between government and the property owners, part of the arrangement. And then it says, continued on page 18. Arrangement for obtaining the necessary land was very fair indeed to both sides. Mr. S. S. Tuttings thought that the members had made the unfortunate remarks should apologize. Mr. J. E. P. Vesey, chairman of the finance committee, was among those who had made them. Mr. Vesey said he had made certain remarks after the debate. Someone was, was interested in the property, contacted him, and he had, he had relayed the additional information received to the House. I don't know why the Honorable Member referred to unfortunate remarks, Mr. Vesey said. He thought the negotiations should, should that the government could operate with the Acquisition of Land Act. He referred to an amendment of the Act allowing the arbitrators to take it into consideration, consideration changes which might be beneficial to the property. It could well be argued in this case that there would be some value accruing. I am not considering the award, he said, under, sorry, criticizing the award, he said. Under the Act, members had to agree to the price. Arbitration was the correct method rather than going out and building a wall, he com continued. Captain Winter congratulated Mr. Butterfield and his committee for the successful conclusion of the negotiations. The red would be of in inestimable value to the highway users in Bermuda. I hope the Honorable Member can advise us that it can be opened without delay, he said. He was glad the matter had been settled to the satisfaction of the public and trustees. Mr. Butterfield, the Board of Works will complete the road at the earliest possible, earliest possible moment, depending on commitments. Mr. Totting said this was going to make South Court Avenue, where Mr. J. E. P. Vesey lived, much more accessible. Mr. Vesey said he was surprised at his member, Captain Winter. There had been activity on the Earl Railway right of way already. The Honorable Member might come to Paget sometimes and see these things, Mr. Vesey said. Now, in your research, and, and I use that word because you have been very thorough, did you come upon any proof of birth, death of your, of the grandparents? Birth I, certificate? I didn't have birth certificates, but I have copies of the wheels. Please. And technically, this was not supposed to go in. Pardon me? This was not supposed to be a, 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 an exhibit or anything like that. Okay. But the, the document you have there okay. speaks to... Beg your pardon? Yes, the document speaks to tracing the property that had been 
left by your forefathers. Okay, I have a guess of Charlotte E. Burgess's will probated in Supreme Court. Yes, we don't need to read the contents of it. We don't need to read the contents of it. But you have both wills there. I have Agathas and I have Coolrich Richardson. Coolrich Austin Whitfield Richardson. And Agatha is your great Grand, My grand grandmother. And Cyril is? Uh, Coolrich was my great uncle. Okay. So in respect of your grandmother's will, which you have, I just asked for that document for you to allow us to tender that as an exhibit. Do you have copies? No, we don't. Thank you. Um, give them copy. But um, just for the purposes, could you just take it and then I'll just ask for chairman to consider it being tender as an exhibit? Okay, sir. Yes. You have, what do you have there? I have my grandmother, the late Agatha Charlotte Eve Richardson's um, will. Okay. You wish me to? Yes, I, I wish to have that tendered as an exhibit. Exhibit C-A-E-C. -E 11? 11. We won't need you to read that one, madam. Oh, thank you. <laughs> It's dated. It's dated date of death the twenty fifth of October nineteen sixty three. Will of the uh, Agatha. What's her full name? Agatha Charlotte E. Burgess. Did you say Eve? Eve, E-V-E. -E. Charlotte E. Burgess. Burgess. Mm -hmm. uh, grandmother dated the 25th of October, 1953. 1963. 1963. 1963. 1963, that's when she passed. Oh, and the date of the will. Oh, the date of the will. It's the date of the will I'm looking for. I thought you said 53, Miss uh, Clark. Let me give you the date of the will. The date of the will is 20... ninth of November, recorded. Uh, the, the 12th day of July, 1,947 was the date of her will. 12th July. 12th of July, 1,947. Right, that's the date I'd like. And it's entered as Exhibit CAEC 11. I have copies. I made copies for you. the copies. Do you have copies of it? Um, they can have these copies because I have my originals. Yeah. So I have to be asking Miss Clark permission. She guards her documents very carefully. <laughs> That's a good thing. This is not a bad thing. That, that is why I appear to be dancing between raindrops here. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes,
terms of two cents and thirty cents. Ask uh, so you to look at copies of those documents, madam, one at a time. Mm, yes. Uh, these are deaths and marriages of my Just family. Speak into the microphone. First. Deaths and marriages of my family recorded in my Aunt Cecily's Bible. Okay. Cecily was the sister of my grandmother, later Agatha Burgess. Okay. Now, which one? Let, let's start first with the marriage. No, sorry, let's start with the birth. One is, one is birth. You didn't give me birth. Okay. You gave me deaths and okay. marriages. I meant to give you birth. <laughs> that was in my, um, let's see, where is my... This is my exhibit number 18 is bringing up. Thank you. So we're, we're going to enter that. Uh, you, you, what you refer to as Exhibit 18, you have made notes of the family tree, so to speak. Correct. My aunt Eva made notes of the family tree to be tendered. And you, and in addition, you have attached to it our documents, which you are going to speak to now. Who is aunt? Who is aunt? Your aunt? You mentioned who? My aunt Eva is Cecily Case's first daughter. She now resides in uh, Leduc, Alberta, Canada. Edmonton, actually. And your aunt, her relation to your grandmother? Niece. Okay. And these documents, these notes, represent... What do they represent? Family tree and information and in history. And what you refer to as Exhibit 18, it is how many pages? Ten. Ten pages. I'd ask that those 10 pages that Miss Clark refers to as a family tree with supporting documents which have been supplied by her aunt, that they may be tender admitted as exhibit C A E C 11. 12. Is that 12 or 11? 11. It's 11. I think it's 11. I believe it's 12, Madam. Ah, oh, yes, you're right. Okay, the, the, the will of... The will is 11. All right. Now, can you just take us, Miss Clark, through the documents, the copies of documents there. One says birth, marriages, death. The birth... You have that there with you? Yes, I do. In respect of your Agatha, Agatha Burgess, is her name appearing there? Correct. Born the 13th, 15th of July, 19, uh, sorry, 1899. What was her maiden name then? Richardson. She was the daughter of Reverend Austin and Susan Isabella Richardson.
but just for this note, however, was made by your aunt in her Bible. Yeah. It's, my, it's not an official record. It's, it's yeah, a, just, okay. just, just for. Okay. And in respect of the marriage, one did um, with the word marriage is on it. Could you share that with us? In respect of Agatha uh, I Richardson? Can't, I can't be, make out the date, but I know she got married in September of some year. Okay. And the death, it's labeled death. Mm -hmm. uh, Agatha Charlotte E. Burgess died October 25th, 1963. And once again, this is based on the note of your aunt. Correct. Okay. Her sister, my great aunt, Cecily Casey. Cecily Virginia Marie Casey. Date of death, December 13, 1992. And the entry in respect of Eva Richardson, can you tell us where it is on that page? To the fourth entry, is that on the sheet marked deaths? Eva Susan Isabella Richardson died 14th of February, 1938. Thank you. Now, the reason that you made this claim to the Commission of Inquiry is your concern about what? Could you share? Concern about uh, segregation and all the qualms that come out of that. And the Forms and the matters of segregation. The injustices, etc. Financial, economic, and uh, social. Would you like to expand on it, or that is the extent of? Well, uh, I had um, found a book called The Color of Law, and I put in my witness statement these final words. And as Richard Rothstein has written in his book, Summary of Color of Law, residential segregation is entrenched and excavates serious political, social, and economic problems. That's my 11th uh, point in my summary. I'm just going to ask you to repeat it, but to talk a little slower for us, please. This matter 11. Point 11, and as Richard Rothstein has written in the book, The Summary of Color of Law, residential segregation is entrenched and excavates serious political, social, and economic problems. Thank you. What I'm going to ask you to do, I'm going to just ask you to read your witness statement it is caec1 and exhibit it was not read before i'm just going to ask you to read it for us witness statement what you're reading from that you okay. said that was paragraph 11 i'm just going to ask you to take us through it and read from paragraph one not the document you just read from which is in your hand mm -hmm. which oh, starts yeah. my name carol oh. and elizabeth clark I was going to ask you to read from the start to the end for us. The statement of witness, Carol Ann Elizabeth Clark, date of birth 28 December 1958, 100 North Charade, Pembroke, HM 14, Finn, 232, 2385, occupation, employer, semi-retired -retire community worker. 
statement dated the You 20th. can go straight to the my name. Okay. Thank you. My name is Carol Ann Elizabeth Clark, and I'm the eldest child of Randall Bradford and Dr. Faith Burgess Clark, on whose behalf I am making this presentation to the commission. See my full biography, Exhibit 1. The statement is tendered with the greatest humility in respect of the late Agatha Charlotte Eve Richardson Burgess, my grandmother, maternal, a legacy in herself, a woman who was well respected in this community no matter where she went. She canvassed alone the length and breadth of Hamilton Parish years before my birth, and through her efforts, Hilton Hill and Walter A. H. Robinson were elected to the House of Parliament. She was the daughter of Reverend Austin and Eva Susan Isabella Bascom Richardson, a strong unit, a strong Christian unit who were blessed beyond measure and vested in their daughter a vast amount of freehold property as a legacy and as, assets as, a, as, a part of as part of her legacy and assets at an early age. Unfortunately, Agatha was ridiculed by most of her land acquired by compulsory purchase under the Acts of I'm Government sorry, I'm Statutes. Sorry, could I just ask you to slow down? No, just you're missing some words. Could you just Unfortunately Agatha was ridiculed by having most of her land quiet acquired by compulsory purchase under the Acts of Government Statutes, namely the Public Works Department Act nineteen thirty and the Acquisition of Land Act nineteen forty one. This compulsory conveyance states that she was paid a thousand pound cash with a transfer of 0 0.150 acres of roadside property to the east. Moreover, correspondence between Ms. Bur Agatha Burgess and the government of Bermuda concerning a request and granting of right of way by foot. This has been blocked for a length of time by fencing, etc. And in actual fact, the Francis Patton Lower School is built on the property boundary and right through the right of way itself. The last time this matter was raised in 2009, this is another point to ponder as government does not seem interested. Mrs. Burgess' daughter, Dr. Faith Burgess Clark, and her sister Vivian were again targeted as earnest by another government minister, the late, the Honorable. Gloria McPhee in 1973, who silently swindled them out of summer property by asking to place a sidewalk eastward from the roadside boundary some four to five feet in on property of the equity holders without payment or any type of consideration. The early statement they made, think about the children. We also need to be compensated for this partiality. Getting back to the real premise, a thousand pounds paying to Agatha was not enough considering the fact that the property was compulsory from the compulsory purchase from Trimingham family for Red and Padgett was paid at a four thousand pounds per acre, which was greater than Agatha or her brother, Mr. Whitfield Richardson, were compensated. I believe this was discriminative manipulation. Please be advised this property is a Bascom, le Bascom legacy which open brackets according to family brackets up close close um close was purchased by daniel and charlotte mallory my great 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 grandparents from their purported slave owner edison sion around the time of emancipation see baskin family tree i believe that the new school should have at least been named after the original Bascom family whose descendants gave up their land for the school instead of being named after a white Bermudian Francis Patton. Please review all relevant documents attached to this witness statement and listed on the next page. If any documentation is needed, I will be happy to try and find, or I will ha be happy to try and provide it. Agatha's favorite saying was, cast your bread upon the waters and will return after many a day. And as Richard Reinstein has written in the book, Summary of Color of Law, residential segregation is entrenched and exacerbates serious political, social, and economic problems. Thank you. My final question 
in respect of your paragraph 8, where you speak about the belief that the new school should have, should have at least been named after the original Bascom family, whose descendants gave up their land for the school. Is that something that you maintain and would ask the Commission to consider mm -hmm. at this time? Yes, I do. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have no further questions at this time. Thank I am not you. certain if... Mr. Counsel. Simmons. Good afternoon, Commissioners. I am Clarks. I just want uh, to uh, ask a few questions for clarification. Mm -hmm. I, I have it listed as Exhibit uh, CAEC78, which is the correspondence between um, government. government, your grandmother mm -hmm. writing to government requesting uh, a right of way. Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, in that letter, she she writes, uh, "May I please be granted a right of way or easement over the land recently sold by me to government for a playing field, in order that I may reach my land on the waterfront." Mm -hmm. um, when she speaks about the land recently sold, she's. Do you agree that she's talking about the land that was a part of the conveyance? Compulsory purchase. The, well, yes, the conveyance dated the 5th of uh, April. 5th of May, 1953. Sorry, 1953. So can I just take you to the that particular document? Mm -hmm. Yes, correct. And you would notice that there is a plan attached to that document, correct? Yes, it's right here. Yes, that plan. So from that letter, do you... Do you uh, agree that she's requesting a right of way over that piece of land? Correct. That's the only land she had. And you, can you accept that if a grant of right of way over that land would have been smacked in the middle of the property? Well, that's nothing, nothing to do with me at the moment. Uh, no, she, I'm just trying to make sense of the request, that's all. She's made a request over the right of way can, can can my brother answer? Sure. Me? Just sure. one moment, please. Oh, sorry. Can you help fix the mic so she can speak? In regard to the right of way, the request was made in May of 1956. The request was made based on the fact that there was water, I mean, there was property on the water's edge. There is no relevance to why and if it would have been smack dab in the center of the school. That's not the issue. She wanted to be able to get to her waterfront property. If you understand Hamilton Parish, and if you didn't think that you were trespassing over government property, that being the school land, then the only other entrance to, a, to get to her land would be either at Bay Corner, if the train tracks were there, or you had to go to as far as Coral, he, Coral Point, that's across from Coral Gas, um, the gas station at, at um, Coral Hill. Be with the other, uh, uh, right. right uh, so in order to be honest, which she was uh, indeed a Christian lady, that would have required her to walk all the way from her house to Crow Point and then back across that area to get to her waterfront property. So the relevance of whether or not it was legitimate or it made sense, that's not for me. That's what she asked for. Like I said, my question is to try to clarify what the request was. Well, that was... So uh, request, that was indeed the request that she wanted to have an easement over the property, over her property that was compulsory purchase to get to her property at the water's edge. Now, had there been no compulsory purchase, there would have been no issue. The response to that letter right. was uh, a response from, uh, as a matter of fact, was there a response to that? Yes, there was a few responses that the council let us through earlier. They are all exhibits. 
Was there a response to your grammar? That's what I'm asking. Yes, it was a response. Okay, I'm just, I'm sorry, I just, maybe I missed it. There's already been tendered in evidence uh, our documents are only the case right now. Perhaps if I let you know the, the documents that I have. Right, okay. Uh, there's, a, there's correspondence between the acting director of Public Works, and that's dated the 15th of May, 1956, to the Attorney General's chamber, to the Attorney General. What's the letter that you write? That should be there. That's from 8 to 11. Okay, it's a article dated the 15th of May, 1956. Let's see if this is correct. This is the one from the director. Right, from the acting, acting director, director of Public Works. Just to the, the, to the uh, Honorable Attorney General. Attorney General. Now, that would highlight the discussion in regard to the request for an, for an easement over the property. I, I accept that. I guess the question I was asking is, um, here, I don't see one, but I do see this correspondence that would suggest that the request that she made was entertained at that time by the acting director of public works. And then there looks as if there was a response, and I'm trying to locate it now. I think the response you're referring to is the response from the attorney general back to the director of public works, correct? Uh, that in one, okay. That was the 18th of May, 19th. Okay, I, I also have one here that looks like it would be Article 29. I think you, well, that was a correspondence coming back from Captain Cowie, um, from the Director to Honorable Attorney General, and it says, Re ACE Burgess, thank you for your letter of this 18th of May, 1956, as requested by Captain Cowie. I now include conveyance May 5th. And that was planned for 146-A-4. And and there would appear to have been a document that should want the proposed easement right, should have looked like at that point. I now, guess the only question I'm asking is that I don't have that. So, no, it's, uh, it's here a month's all this stuff. No, uh, I would have to try the, to sort myself the, out to put it back in some sort of order. Yeah. I can refer you to, who was that last large command? If I could be direct, I'm looking for correspondence from the government to your grandma, which would have indicated to her I mean, I know that these, in, these, these documents speak to an internal discussion, but my question is, um, I don't at, see At this point, I don't see anything like that, but I do have a lot of paperwork here, which I would have to look through. So okay. at this point, well, I cannot. Thank you. That's, that's fine. I just, I didn't have it, so I thought maybe you oh, had okay. something from the government to your grandmother where they agreed to, to, to honor her request. It's in, 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 the, in the government. Well, based on just this little sidebar with my sister, she said it should be listed within the government's record. So that would mean that in the Attorney General's chambers somewhere or in the archives that you would be able to find that particular information. That's how we came across this. No, I didn't see what this, you got this information. But again, I don't want to belabor the point. Right, understood. Yeah, the point is just I just didn't see anything no. okay. where, where the government uh, responded to that request and to your grandmother to say, yes, Miss um, Burgess, we will, we will grant you this, uh, grant you your request. But I don't, like I said, I don't want to believe this point. But on that note, though, with respect to this right of way, um, I believe your, Miss um, Clark, you mentioned that you commissioned uh, the Bermuda Caribbean Engineering Consultants. Yeah. The right yeah. And uh, I think I have it as an exhibit. There was an exhibit that was just entered that spoke to the
the existence of the property as it is now. There was a, there was a plan, I think it was um, CAEC 9, yeah, and then you mentioned that there was a sketch, yeah. CAEC 9A. And you, I think you mentioned that um, Oh, okay, so I think I have it here. Right. Now, you, you, your evidence was that uh, you and um, uh, your attorney, Phil Parent Chief, commissioned um, Bermuda Caribbean Associations to prepare this plan, correct? Correct. Do you, do you recall whether or not um, the title deeds were given to this particular surveyor? Yeah, they had copies. They had copies of the title deeds? And in those title deeds, is that where your, your, your evidence is that? You see there's a right of way that he's drawn? Yes, that's correct. And, and that right of way, uh, instead of, say, going. They had uh, documentation on file to indicate what the points should be. All the points and steel, steel points and stuff were placed in and everything like that. Mr. Parent Chief and I visited the area and they showed him as well where everything was located. This was like about 30 years ago. Yeah, um, I'm just trying to, again, um, it's only for clarification so that uh, I can understand uh, the nature of the request. Because in, the, in that first letter, she requested a... A right of way or easement. Right. Up over the land that she sold, correct? Correct, and also the land that Bermuda Railway had um, left right. out exactly. to the which, ocean. Which would have been yes. right next to the piece on the water. Yes, right. exactly. Uh, but you see that this right away drawn here actually goes from your property. It doesn't go straight. It goes from your property going uh, westward. And then That's what was the area that my family owned anyway. The whole, the whole plot was in by the Bascoms. Right. I'm just trying to understand this particular plan that you submitted. It goes westward, and then it goes along the uh, western boundary. Correct. Down to, say, the, uh, which, which from my perspective makes more sense. That's what I'm saying. As opposed to the request going from directly through the field, as, as, as I was suggesting the, the request was. So it looks as if, and again, I don't have any evidence of this other than this, this particular plan that shows a right of way. But my question is, I don't know where your survey I got this information. Okay, well, he has certain um, documentation on file. You could probably um, get the information from him. Okay, because this information is not in your title. Well, actually, in actual fact, Mr. Vince Stanley and Stephen Guy Matthew, Stephen Guy Matthew is now deceased, as far mm -hmm. as I can, can remember, and uh, Mr. Vince Stanley is retired. He's still alive, though. Okay. I contact him all the time. His wife so, and I are there. So you accepted friends. that new right of way was actually granted? No, I don't, because it says that the easement was granted by foot. Um, um, unfortunately, it doesn't say that. That was the request. It was in documentation that I presented to this panel. Okay. Like I said, I, I don't want this to become confrontational. My, my rule is trying to get some clarity as to if the, the commission find that the, a right of way should have been granted, then I'm just trying to say where do you think that the best, do you accept that this particular right of way that's drawn on this particular plan is probably the best solution? Well, that's the latest plan. And furthermore, all the steel points have been put in. Yes, um, yes, but those points would have been put there based on some form of information that he had. What we don't know is what information he had. That's the only point I'm trying to make. Well, I would suggest maybe 
public works will be responsible to find out what the, the true thing is. Well, like I said, I don't want to leave the point, but um, um, Madam Chair, those are my questions. Thank you. Councilor just, just one, Madam Chair. Uh, Ms. Clark, you just stated to Council that you had presented a document to this Commission. This is a follow up on, not, not, this is your response to Council's question whether or not you had received any response from the Attorney General's Department. But in re-examination, I ask you, if you could assist us with regards to what you refer to when you say you had presented something here to us regarding I think the words were the right of way, Council may correct me if I'm wrong. Um, the thing is that I, uh, I'm relying on the government uh, responses to my grandmother's first letter. This document, the witness is being shown exhibit CAEC 6. It is dated the 19th of May 1956. It's a notice letter from AG to Public Works. Plan is attached. And I think I recall when the witness, yeah, yes, I had I said to the witness that it was the 18th and she Yes, this is pointed correct. out to me that it was the 19th. The stamp is different from the actual date. Yes, this is the correct is, is that is that the document you're referring to, madam, in terms of the response? Yes, I am. I just asked that the, the it's an exhibit, if she could just read it. Read it, everything you see on the page, madam. From the Attorney General to the Director of Public Works. Reference your memorandum of and, and please take your time, please. Your memo eight two seven A P W D fifty six, dated fifteenth May fifteenth May nineteen fifty six. I'm afraid that I cannot confirm slowly, as slowly, slowly, slowly. I conf I am afraid that I cannot confirm as in paragraph three of your minute under reference, but Mrs. Burgess obviously must be granted a right of way to get to her property. It could and perhaps should have been done at the time of the conveyance of land to government by way of reservation. And I suggest that such a reservation now be endorsed on the conveyance. 18th of May, 1956, JB, whatever, Attorney General, Public Works Department received May 19, 1956. Okay, but, but to be fair to counsel, um, as he said, nothing was written directly to you from the Attorney General's Department. Oh, I don't know. It could have or, or or been sent to my grandmother, but she's been gone like most of my life. Yeah. All right, thank you. Nothing further. Thank you. Commissioners, any questions for the witness? Do you have any? any? Uh, no? No? no question? No question, yes. Okay. Go ahead, please. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, either Ms. or Ms. 
Clark can answer. Um, just as a way of, of uh, information of myself and, and the Commission, you say that the biggest impediment to right of way was walls or gates. Um, would that, where would that have been in, in relation to the railway trail? I, I was such in my mind to say uh, the trains had stopped running, obviously, so it was the railway trail. Right. right. And that would have meant uh, to the east of that, or it would have been the, to the north of that, would have been the ocean, yeah. uh, or the land abutting the ocean. So what type of barricade was it? Well, cor currently, if you look at the picture that was sub submitted that was done early in the it's on the screen now. If you see the clear part that says um, 44 by something cross, at that juncture, at the end of that boundary, right now there has been erected a wall per se and a fence, which means that at the end of her boundary, which now is occupied and owned by my sister, that is as far as they can go. So if there was an easement that was given, the easement is shut off before you even leave your yard because the wall and the fence are there. And was that wall erected as you It would have been know? erected by Who? the Bermuda government. So it would have, would have been from the railway trail. Nope, you're, well, you're missing. Going back further up. It's at the boundary edge of the property itself. So yes. My house, is, my house is here. This is the boundary. That's the field right here. I cannot, unless I climb the fence or jump. So you can't even go on to no. the field to access the initial part of the right of way. Correct. And okay, I'm interested in the saw, the part that would have um, eg you know, e egressed onto the railway trail and then the Oceanside property. What type of barricade is there? Is there any barricade? Well, at the end of the field is a fence. And as I stated earlier, if you right. understand how wooden parish, Currently, right now, there's the bridge that runs at Bay Corner, and then yes. there's also the other entrance at Coral Point. Yes. So, at this point, the only other options, if you don't consider yourself trespassing by going over the property, then there's your only two avenues of getting there, unless you go to the next little part of my aunt's property, and then you try to walk off the hill. So, as a point of clarification, if you were or if one was to operate under the directions of the last letter, letter that you got, uh, or that you saw, mm -hmm. giving instructions or, or, or an indication that there could be a right-of-way, uh, would that right-of-way have followed the survey that you got uh, by Caribbean uh, Associates? Um, that would I cannot speak to because I was not involved in that hmm. particular aspect. However, I can say if that was what was placed, then that had to be the general idea as to what was supposed to happen in order to get there. And would that have been on the perimeter of the school field between your personal, for the, between the family probably and the, and the school field, or at the you know one extremity of I'm, the school field? I'm looking field. at the way that it would look. That it would be on the family property. Remember, it was two siblings' property that was taken. Yes. One portion of that property still has. It's got trees. If yes. you know Hamilton Francis Patton, it's trees that go all the way down one yes. side, the school ends right here. That property still belongs to the government. Where the trees are, and then it's the arable land. Yes. In which the owner is sitting right here. And should a right of way be allowed, would it go through the field or would it go it would have to along, go around alongside the field? It would go have around to go around the field. On the edge and then take you down. I mean, and, I and that would be feasible in your opinion? Would that be feasible? That's the only option. In your made. opinion. In that's my opinion, if that's the only option, that would be feasible. Yes. Uh, that, that's, the, that's the answer. Right. It, so it is feasible that without encroaching on the field and without too much encroachment on, your, on the private property, that that eight foot, no, that would be foot could that be feasible. Of, so that would have to be feasible. It, it is an option. Right. In your opinion. Well, I mean, if that be the case, if the government wanted to hold fast, to what they had agreed to from the Attorney General, and that would be the only option. Right. right. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Mr. Starter, question? I do, but I'll let you speak first. Mm -hmm. So kind, sir. 
Okay. Go ahead, please, Mr. Scoble. Uh, Ms. Benz, I yield to Ms. Benz. <laughs> Thank you, fine, sir. Good day. Good day. Um, I just wanted to know whether or not the family, um, whether or not the family actually views the other side of the um, railroad, railroad track onto your property? Well, I, I can say this. When I lived in Hamilton Parish, I used to go fishing there, just like some of the other gentlemen in the neighborhood. So it was used. Kids still swim there. Yeah. Right now, the, the Francis Patton has a little dock that they put in front there, so most times people will be jumping off the dock or swimming from that area because it's easily accessible. How would you access it from your property? How would I access it if I was still living there and just if you would, the field? Well, the family. Remember, there's no security on schools after a certain hour, so I would just, like we normally did, okay. be played on so Francis Patton School. Well, technically, yes, I <laughs> trespass. So, um, if that was the case, and um, it was over land that was uh, compulsorily purchased. Um, I guess this is a question for the conveyance lawyer. Is it possible that the family may um, have created a right of way or um, easement over the property that was um, compulsorily purchased just from use over, we're talking 60, 64, 64 years. years. What, is that possible? It's, it's normally would be uh, unrestricted use, meaning that with, and without permission for them to actually get one, what is called by prescription. Uh, are, we, um, are we not here now? Pardon me? They're using the land without permission? No, but it has, it has to be for at least 21 years. So you're uh, talking 60, about, it's talking about 64 years. No, but I'm saying that means they would have, there would have been, from that when it started, continuous uninterrupted use. That use was, was definitely disrupted if there was one, at the time the fence was built and the, and the, right, and right. the right, right. So the other point that, I, uh, as a matter of conveyancing, is that you will see that the Attorney General suggested uh, that the endorsement be done by way of reservation. Now, in conveyancing, there are two ways to reserve, and it would have been for, say, Ms. Clark's, sorry, Ms. Burgess, she had that right. Before she conveyed it to the government, mm -hmm. she could have either reserved that right of way for herself, uh, and there's, there's another term called an exception. Mm -hmm. So she could have either conveyed it and, and held back a strip right. um, at that time. But um, as you can see from the conveyance, that did not happen. Right. So she would have lost that right. And the, and, the, and the point is that the the only person that could do that, or anyone that the only person that could do a reservation, would have been uh, Mrs. Bird. Oh, oh, yes, your yes. grandmother. Right. Yes. Right. She was she was she was the owner of that property, and mm -hmm. as she was conveying it in that same deed, mm -hmm. she could have reserved rights. Right. Uh, and so uh, the point I'm trying to make here is that. When the learned attorney general made the suggestion that you could... Council, when you're through, we're going to take a very short break. Well, I will then. finish up very quickly. I just wanted to... Uh, the question was asked, and I'm just mm -hmm. trying to help the... Yes, condition. but you can finish if you want to take a short break. <laughs> That's fine. So, uh, as I said to you, the only person that could do a reservation mm -hmm. out of that particular document would have been... Uh, uh, Mrs. Mrs. Uh, Burgess. Okay. So, so when the Attorney General suggested that he would do a reservation, that's legally impossible. Right. So that's why I was. That's why I'm trying to just get clarification mm -hmm. as to an explanation as to why this perhaps did not. We know that what the intention was, mm -hmm. but that legal impediment could have been the reason why it didn't go ahead, as opposed to right. not a desire to do it. So. Yeah, okay, I'm fine. That's it. Okay. We're just taking a very short break and hold on to your last words.
they built that school on the Simmons, you are speaking? No, I believe I had you finished? made my point. I, oh, I, 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 oh, I oh, your mask. Was it mask? Your mask. Okay. So, see one. Oh, yes, <laughs> uh, if I just wanted to circle back, um, notwithstanding what you had just um, described um, uh, from a legal perspective. I was actually speaking to um, the use of the land by the family over the course of um, time, and I was just wondering if by them using the property, um, they had not, not using the, the um, access that they wanted to create, but by using an alternative route, have they created an, uh, an easement 
because it's been over 64 years of the same property that they um, gave up. I think that was the point I thought I was asked, answering, in that for them to have done that, it should have been what we call long usage. That's right. And over that particular pathway, mm -hmm. so to speak. Uh, and that is something that um, they would have to establish that that was the case. And if they could do that, right. then by all means, they would have established what is called uh, easement by way of prescription. Okay. Now, family, are you able to prove that um, you had continually used the property over... Um, well, what I am able to prove is that the Francis Patton School was built in 1950. The Francis Patton School was originally just a pop top portion because remember the conveyance of that property between, between my uncle and my grandmother was for a playing field. Mm -hmm. Subsequently to that, there was a school built almost smack dab outside her house. So if you talk about an easement, there was never going to be an easement because the property that was built there would have obstructed any chance of there being an easement or a correct easement because I can't walk through the center of the school in order to get down to the field. So the easement part would have been easy had it just been a field like it was originally intended to be. Right. I'm going to ask again because um, I initially started out as to asking you how you went down to, um, you know, access well, the... Well, when I was living in the neighborhood, there was a break in the early under trees by the scout house where everyone went to and from school, which means that every afternoon after school, 90% mm -hmm. of the neighborhood ended up on Francis Patton Field, either playing football or cricket. Now, this went on back in those days up until, I would say, mid-80s, and then Xboxes and all the other little gadgets came into play, so kids stopped readily going outside and playing like we did back in the day. Mm -hmm. So at this point here, the new residents that, uh, I guess you can say, rent from my sister, they know that they can't get access, but you still see people on occasion on the field, so people will find some way, either they walk through the gate because it's never locked, and they will entertain themselves on the field at whatever time you like. So specifically, has your sister used the... Um well, my sister doesn't live there, so... Uh, who, who, right. Are the family members still... I, I would say there, there are no children in from my family that actually live in, the, in that area at this present point, so I would have to say no to that. Okay. I was trying to get you an easement over the property, but you just not co cooperating with me. Well, see, the easement over the property basically would have possibly been granted, and, and as I stated a couple of minutes ago, Mm -hmm. The field was supposed to be what the purchase, compulsory purchase was for. Mm -hmm. At that point, the easement granted, even if you watch from the attorney general, would have been a straightforward, just, okay, here is your gate. You go, you could walk over the field to get down to your property. Once the building got built there, that changed the whole dynamic. Mm -hmm. You can't put an easement through a building. Okay. I was just going off of the map that you provided. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Bills, Mr. Stelter. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good afternoon, Mr. and Mrs. Clark, Ms. 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 Clark. Um, thank you for your uh, contribution thus far to this commission proceedings. Um, I just have a few questions. Uh, is there a document that defines the parcel of land on the northern foreshore? Um, in, in other words, is your family in possession mm -hmm. of uh, I guess either the railway acquisition deed that would have severed the property or, or an outright Well, deed if plan. you go back to 1924, when the railroad was actually put in place. And it was actually 29 20, to well, 33, right. something But I'm like saying that. in 1924, there seemed to have been some acquisition of land through any area of Hamilton Parish. So those persons who owned property in that particular area gave up property in order for the railroad trail to be built. Um, most of those persons, oh, oh, she's just put this here. Let's see. I think the only reason I'm asking is um, right now it's sort of like a, um, not an illusion, but it, it's, it's a, we're only guessing. Okay. Well, um, and for, for the purposes of your ultimate goal, I believe, would be to actually establish where that 
parcel is so that whatever in a perfect world right of way or easement you gain, you find your way back to that parcel, yes? Correct. So I, I have in possession now which says the Bermuda Railway Commissioner's Chancery Lane, Chancery Hall, Hamilton, dated 23rd of April, 1930. The secretary to the Bermuda Railroad Company Limited, it says, Dear Sir, read Land of Agatha Burgess, Hamilton Parish, H27B-C. With reference to your letter of the 11th, instant and in terms of section 21-1 of the Bermuda Railway Company Act 1924, I enclose herewith an order dated the 16th instant vesting in your company the premise of the above owners described in notice A dated 31st of March 1930 together with a plan number H27BC dated 24th March 1930. I return herewith the receipt form enclosed with your letter for 40 pounds dated the 23rd of April, 1930, duly signed by Ms. Agatha Burgess. As Excuse me, one moment, Madam Chair or Council. Um, I'm, I don't know if this uh, document has been entered into um, evidence. Is, is that the case? Well, it being it was never asked for because we were talking more so. I'm just asking property. a point of clarification. No, I have it here. Is, is that required? I, I don't think so because he has been asked that question and he okay. is, be, is responding to the question. And no problem. Something that he has been asked. Okay, I just wanted to. So, so it's also a plan here. Yes. And this was dated from the Bermuda Railway Company, uh, re Miss Agatha Burgess, Hamilton Parish. It's H, as I said earlier, H27 BC. Okay. So it's a three. It's a three-page document that was written in 1930 in regards to that parcel of land to the, I guess you can say, the northern part yes. of her property, which would have granted her to retain that particular property. Yes. So I would say, yes, there is documentation to support that. And okay. if you recall- Mr. Mr. Uh, Commissioner, perhaps I could be of assistance. The, if your question is the title to the piece of land that they own on the water, mm -hmm. that title was a part of the initial title that was given to their grandmother by her mother mm -hmm. back yes, in 1924. Yes. I'm familiar. It's yeah, just so, that it so, hasn't... So the only, the only pieces that came out of that were this particular piece right. that was sold to, and then piece that was then sold to the government. Right. It's just that we haven't seen any representation of that. There's been talk of the parcel, but it's not actually represented on any documents that we have. Well, so, it is. It is in the. It's described in the twenty-four, uh, in the conveyance of nineteen twenty-four. Right. Okay. You see, in that conveyance, it talks about the property going straight to the, the to, to 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 the uh, Atlantic Ocean. Yes. Okay. Fair enough. Um, I I accept. So okay. no problem. Um, so hopefully that could assist in any resolution to your satisfaction. Understood. Going forward. Um, I, I have a question with regards to the valuing of the property. Um, you've raised some concerns um, in that matter. Um, first of all, I'd like to commend you on the, um, the examples that you use. Um, I guess you couldn't get any better than Paget and the man <laughs> or the like. Um, so I, I highly commend you on that. Uh, to that end, um, I, I utilize the example uh, that you provided in comparative analysis. And um, I'd just like to share it with you and, and get your feedback. Um, and, and also bearing in mind the, um, the exhibit you made with re, um, submitted with regards to the Royal Gazette article and the debate. Mm -hmm. um, and I stand to be corrected, but I believe the initial offer was 250 pounds. Yeah, somewhere in that area. Yes. Um, so taking all that into consideration, uh, you, you raised the, the matter of um, the uh, Paget property and a rate of 4,000 pounds per acre. Yes? Right, correct. Um, 
So in analyzing the, the final uh, sale price of your grandmother's property, which I believe was 0 0.345 acres, yes? Yes, correct. Um, that, with, that, uh, with that valuation of 4,000 per acre, that gives us a value of 1,380 pounds. Right, correct. Yes? Uh, she was offered 1,000 pounds cash. Yes? Yes. Additionally, she was offered or she was given uh, 0 0.126 acres of land. Correct. Which Correct. would have a par value at 4,000 pounds per acre of 505 pounds. That is correct, and we did the maths on that as well. Yes, so therefore, you would actually have a, a, a relative, and these are approximations, uh, using the dimensions on the plans that you provided. Um, you would end up with a settlement of, approx uh, with a value of approximately 1,505 pounds. That's correct. So that would be above the 4,000 pounds per acre because you, the comparative of the 4,000 pounds per acre for just the 0 0.345 was 1,380. Okay. I, I understand where you're going. And so I'm just you say does this, that, and you, does are, that bear and you could be. You are almost spot on. Yes. In regard to the fact that if you looked at it from 1950, Yes. The independent MPs of the day that formed the Bermuda government. Yes. Stated in my article, in the article of January 31st, 1956, mm -hmm. that Mr. Daniel Bassam, my great great grandfather, voluntarily conveyed two acres and then they came back and got four acres. The property that went back to my grandmother was still what I would consider my grandfather's, great-grandfather's property that they just done to appease. That is not, to me, good business. Technically, that is an insult, and an insult from the standpoint that my grandfather, after slavery, purchased almost 10 acres plus some on the other side of the street, of which he had 16 children, and basically, almost six acres of that property was taken from him. Regardless of whether it's for a school, regardless of whether there was any good. However, as my sister stated, if, however, the government of the day was honest, were honest brokers at the time, for somebody who voluntarily conveyed something to you, then Francis Patton School would have been Bascom Academy or Bascom Elementary. So to think otherwise, it's also an insult. Mm -hmm. Because have you not sat in the shoes of those people even in Takastan and other places around Bermuda and watched as the hard work of your parents or forefathers goes down the drain because of, and I'm gonna say this, evil or white men decided that that's what they wanted to do. No offense to anyone, mm -hmm. but that's just the reality. Mm -hmm. Bermuda in its entirety back in those times was a racist place. Black people, if you follow what they said in the United States of America, a black man was worth three-fourths of a, three-fifths of a man. So just imagine that. A white man's ice is always colder than mine. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Chair. Anything arise? Oh, you have a moment? I have some questions. That's okay. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you for your testimony so far. Um, I just have uh, two quick questions. Um, first, can you remind me, when was the property vote abolished? The property vote was abolished in um, 58, 56, 58. So it still would have been in place uh, at the time of this conveyance. Correct. Do you know how that might have affected your uh, grandmother's ability would she still have been able to vote after losing this prop? Would she have lost some of her voting ability? She would have. Okay. 
I just note that in in line of what you had previously said in your statement about her political activity right. and how that might have impacted. Well, it was always stated that this particular, when they came for the other portion of the land, it was because her vocalness right. in regard to wanting to see a better Bermuda. Okay. Um, I, I kind of want to echo or follow what my fellow commissioner was talking about regarding the the waterfront property, because I'm confused myself, because looking at this document you have, I can't remember its evidence number, but it's the conveyance yep. of 56. Um, it does note colonial government land, but it doesn't note any of th any property owned by your grandmother on the waterfront. Okay. If you look at the where the railway trail is, it says Bermuda government land, that's where the railway trail. Yeah. To the north of that, you'll see the foreshore. Yes. Everybody was granted their foreshore. So the government's land is the railway trail, and everything other than that belonged to those persons in which they purchased the land from to run the railway trail. Just noting that it's, it's not marked on the map, which is... No, it was never... It was, right. And I was wondering if that might... Obviously, we're missing some correspondence from the government, internal government departments, and any government correspondence to your grandmother. I'm just wondering if maybe the, that was a factor. Well, based on that last little bit that I read from Bermuda uh, Railway Trail, yeah. they indicated that those persons were allowed to keep that portion of land. Yeah. So it was not anything to do with the compulsory purchase, it would still remain there. And if there is a plan that looks, I'm not sure, I, it's a plan that, this is a plan that came from the Bermuda Railway Commission in regard to that particular piece of property. So it, I'm assuming that every person who had property that they, that they, in 1930, that they gave up for the railway trail would have received something similar to this. Uh, I'm not disputing that, but I personally would like to have a sight of that. I, could I get some guidance sure. on how I can have sight of that? Does it have to be entered, or can I just look at it? <laughs> Madam Chairman, I haven't seen the document, and especially based on the line of questioning, the answer came from Ms. Clark, who, as I indicated earlier, has a library at her fingertips. I, I am of the opinion that the document ought properly to be made an exhibit, so we could all have sight of it especially in light of the questions that have been asked. Council has seen the document and has been extremely helpful also regarding the, the law in that regard. So I'd ask after commissioners have had sight of it that you would consider my application. Is this to an extra copy, Ms. Clark? Mm -hmm. Sorry. That no. the, that's the original. That's the only copy we have. So I can, I can assure you that she will not part with it. <laughs> until we have a photocopy on site that's working. <laughs> so so but, will you undertake to uh, make it an exhibit of, of 
well, identify it, and then we could have her undertake to return it. Yes, to, because to if it's made an exhibit, she ought probably not to provide too. us with copies. And I know that there's a copier here, but I don't know. I think they, there's one, Madam Chair, but I think the hour is past that time that we have access to it. Okay. So you will undertake to return it? Bring me a copy. Okay. We'll be here on Monday uh, because we are out of the Secretariat for the week. I'll just know that that was all of my questions, so thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you, Madam Chair. Council. Commissioners have looked at it. I'll have it returned to you so that we can mark it in accordance to your suggestion. I think it's three pages. Very well, um, Madam Chair. No, Ms. Clark, uh, what, what do you have there now? This is a letter dated the 23rd of April, 1930, Bermuda Railway Commissioners, Chancery Hall, Hamilton. And it's addressed to who? It's addressed, it says, Ray Lynn of no, Gatsby. No, 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 without going to the content. The Secretary, Bermuda Railway Company Limited, Hamilton. Okay. And, and that... That set, it comprises of how many documents, pages? Three pages. Okay. I'm going to ask, Madam Chair, that that document which has been identified, that it be marked for identity, C-A-E-C. -E and that will be what? Number? So it would, properly it would be... 12 or 13? 13. 13. 13. Mark identity, C-A-E-C, 13. Yes, and Ms. Clark, you said it's a, a letter. Um, from Bermuda Railway Commissioners. From Bermuda Railway. And it's dated the 23rd, 23rd of, of April, 1930. Council that this letter from the Bermuda Railway Commission dated the 23rd of April 1930 comprising three pages is hereby marked for identification CAC 13. Thank you very much. Madam, those are the questions I believe that we have for these two witnesses. I ask your permission that they be released. 
uh, unless there are any other questions that are required, and we'd like to thank them for their They're cooperation released. and assistance. Sorry. They are indeed released. I don't believe they have any questions, but um, subject to the undertaking that they will return uh, the three page document marked for 13 for identification. I will do that on Monday. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And thank counsel from the attorney general's chambers for his guidance. Thank you, counsel. Much obliged. Um, and uh, do, we, do we need him on Monday? I, I it's, it's a matter with the Browns, but yes, we we didn't um, call on him. Might be useful for you to be here uh, because you might need to represent us. <laughs> Yeah, but um, uh, we can talk about it. Thank you very much. Thank you. And so that's it. And uh, we adjourn until until 9:30. We start at 9:30 on Monday. Monday. Yes, we're starting 9:30 on Monday. Hmm?